everybody. Welcome along to Sports Bet TV. We've got another um, weekend of very good racing across Britain. Just modest stuff in Ireland this weekend. Of course, they've got the uh, big uh, Irish 2000 Guineas meeting next weekend, which we'll be looking at in closer detail. But some good racing this weekend uh, on Saturday in particular. And I've got two selections for you. If you happen to be new to the service, don't uh, rush away. Just press the um button the red button just below this screen and then you'll be able to follow all my bulletins uh using that subscribe button and you'll uh, not miss a thing with my free tips here at sports bet well last week uh went pretty well didn't it we had two selections uh the first of them was spy catcher who ran very well really in the victoria cup to finish fourth he was recommended at 16 to 1 each way and that was a nice place bet for us, but it got even better um, just after that at Nottingham, where I found a horse of uh, Tim Easterby's called Show Along, who I suggested might be available at six to one. Uh, as it happened, he opened up at nine to one with quite a few firms. So I know some of you may have been on a bigger odds, but anyway, it was the subject of a major gamble down to 100 to 30, and he absolutely bolted in. So I hope you were on. Six to one was my suggestion. And on that basis, I've calculated the profit and loss. Uh, and what that means that basically uh, so far this month, um, halfway through the month, uh, 80 pounds up to recommended um, stakes. So uh, we're off to a good first half of May and looking forward to continuing it uh, as we move forward. Let me just mention very quickly, I've got quite a number of tips lined up for my subscribers at the Out In Front service at Patreon. The link is available just below this screen if you want to check it out and maybe sign up to join us there. But I'm going to move on now with the very first selection on Saturday. And I'm taking you to the big race of the day. We're not messing about. Uh, it's uh, at Newbury. Uh, the 335 is the Group 1 lock-in stakes, which is over the straight mile, and they're forecasting good ground. And as I'm sure you know, this is one of the best mile races in Europe of the whole season, some say in the world uh, of the whole season. Uh, and this renewal looks very much up to scratch because there are no less than three horses that are rated 120 or above. And that really does mean it's a high quality Group 1 and as long as the ground stays good, there are no thunderstorms or the ground dries out uh, unexpectedly, it's going to be fair to everyone. So there shouldn't really be any excuses. Now, one who certainly won't mind hearing it's who's rattle is the Godolphin uh, owned high class modern games. He's a uh, winner of last year's French 2000 Guineas, you may recall. He was also a very fine second to the mighty Baid in the Sussex Stakes at Goodwood before going up on his travels. Uh, and winning the Grade 1 Woodbine Mile um, in Toronto, in Canada, and then the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Mile at the end of the season. This is a very, very good horse, and he's suited by quick ground. So if the surface does dry out, then he is one that will definitely be suited by it, and you can almost bet your boots that his price will shorten if you see any good to firm in the going description. He's around an 11 or 4 favourite at the time of this recording. Now, I'm surprised to see, with the greatest respect, to see the Philly Laurel put in the list at second favourite at 7-2. to two. She is definitely an exciting prospect. Um, she uh, won very well on a seasonal reappearance in a listed race at Kempton. And that was after winning her first two career starts last term in Novice Company and then going on to run a blinder when second in the Group 1 Sun Chariot Stakes at Newmarket in October. But it's worth noting, and it's not to be overlooked, I don't think, that all her races so far have only been against Phillies. She's never taken on the Colts. Um, she's officially rated £9 inferior to the favourite, and I feel this is by a long way her toughest task to date. Now, you have to respect her as she's trained by the Gosdens, of course, brilliant trainers. Uh, they sent out Soul Sister to bolt up in the Musi door at York earlier in the week, but I wouldn't be recommending backing her at 7-2. Now of the rest, plenty of good horses. My Prospero is trained by William Haggis, who's always got a good one or two. He's rated 121, the same as modern games. Um, he made huge progress last term after winning his maiden at Newbury over this course and distance in April. He came a long way. He followed it up with a listed win 
and then was a very close half length third to the very talented Caribus in the Group 1 St James's Palace Stakes at Royal Ascot. Um, he then got back uh, on the winning trail in a Group 2 at saint Clou uh, in France. And then he ended the term beaten just half a length by Bay Bridge on soft ground in the Group 1 Champion Stakes over a mile and a quarter at Ascot on Champions Day in October. If he's ready to roll and fully wound up, he definitely won't be far away. And in a great race, you've got Simon and Ed Crisford's very smart Jadumi, who won two Group 2s last term before finishing a close third to Bayside Boy in the QE2 at Ascot in Champions Day in October. He hasn't run since. And I'd just be a bit concerned that the ground may be quick enough, even at good for him, because he does like to get his toe in. Um, we've also got the likes of Richard Hannon's Chindit and David Simcock's Light Infantry, two very talented horses who could get involved if things drop their way. So given all the above, um, I feel the value each way choice here, even though the price is already uh, reduced, uh, it's been backed on Thursday night and Friday morning, I think the value is with the Charles Hills trained Muta Sarbeck, who is the mount of Jim Crowley. Now, this horse is a rattling good uh, miler. He's a winner of six of his 13 races. He didn't strike in the group company in the first half of last year, but he went very close, beaten ahead by Chindit in the celebration mile at Goodwood. But things really started to come together towards the end of the season on his final start. And most significant significantly blinkered for the first time he made all the running and he ran on really strongly to win the group two joel stakes at newmarket from el drama that in itself you'd have to say isn't good enough to win this race um a race like the lockinge but on his recent seasonal reappearance he really did look as though he'd taken a big step forward over the winter he's developed and he duly demolished a really good field to win the Group 2 Bet365 mile at Newmarket's Guinness meeting, slamming, amongst others, last year's Irish 2000 Guinness winner, Native Trail by three lengths. Light Infantry and Check and Challenge were third and fourth, respectively, so they've got ground to make up. Now, it's my view that when a good horse gets rolling along in front at Newbury, in particular, they can often be hard to peg back. And if Mutter Sarbeck hits full stride early on, as he did at Newmarket last time with a headgear on, I think it'll take a good one to reel him back in. There are some very good ones in the field on Saturday. There's no doubt about it, better than there were at Newmarket. But I'm prepared to bet that he's going to run a massive race. And I think at the current odds of six to one each way, seven to one has gone, but six to one each way for four places with, with William Hills, and Charles Hills's charge, I think, will go very well indeed. That is Mutter Sarbeck for me to win the big one, the Group 1 um, lockage stakes at Newbury 335 Saturday. And then I'm going to take you on to my second selection, which will be run immediately after they've crossed the line at Newbury. I'll take you up to Thurst, to Heriot Country uh, in North Yorkshire, the 342 race, a six furlong race, the Skybet prize drop handicap. 11 runners, good ground. Now, at the time of this recording, um, no price is on offer. So uh, I'm having to assess this on my own uh, evaluations in what is a very, very trappy handicap with plenty holding claims. Now, Higher Mate, who's trained by Roy Bowring, who trains in uh, Nottinghamshire, I think, uh, he won really nicely at Weatherby last time out. He's gone up six pounds for his troubles. He had been a solid third hope here over course and distance prior to that. There's every chance He'll again be thereabouts. And Tim Easterby, who's having a good run of form this spring, runs both Bay Breeze and Music Society, who were both second last time out. And they could figure here uh, the jockey bookings, uh, if you can read into these things too much. Well, they appear to suggest that David Allen uh, prefers Music Society. He's the stable first jockey. And so he will be marginally preferred. But Easterby also runs a third horse in the race, the bottom race, Matisse who was third in the Air Bronze Cup last year, and he's been coming down the weights after a couple of quiet runs this term, so if there is any money for him, it would be worthy of note. Robert Cowell, well, he has Emperor's Spirit, um, who'll have his supporters having won bravely on the all-weather at Lingfield last time out, for which he's been raised two pounds, but the fact remains he's never won on turf, he's beaten all nine races on turf so far, 
Um, so that rather tempers the enthusiasm, I'd say. And then you've got Karl Burke's Lord of the Lodge, who's come a long way down the weights on turf and could feasibly be very well handicapped if able to recapture some of his old form. And he wasn't disgraced at Newcastle in a hot mile conditions race last time out. I think the drop back in trip will suit him. At the rest, just another bottle. He's a grand old horse, top weight, doubtless. He'll blaze a trail up front, but although the nine-year-old's coming down the weights, he hasn't yet shown enough to suggest he's ready to strike. And then you've got Keith Dalglidge's uh, Abarama Gold. Well supported, actually, at Doncaster a fortnight ago. He didn't run too badly uh, to be second um, off the same markers on Saturday. But my choice uh, up first in the 342 is Rathbone, trained by Michael Harrington and the mount of Jason Hart. Um, and this seven-year-old looking for his seventh career win, and he's recorded two successes last term, one at Doncaster and one at Hamilton. He also showed his liking once again for Thursk, where he's won twice in the past, including winning this very race in 2021. And he failed to follow up in this race last year only by a short head, where he was beaten by Michael Dodds's Tinto, who once again is taking him on. Now, the pair meet again on the same terms, um, having also competed against each other at Doncaster last time. Must be sick of the sight of each other, these two. On that occasion, Rathbone came out by three lengths uh, ahead. He came out best of ahead of Tinto, and I think he can confirm the form. So in a very tight race, where there are loads with chances, I think Rathbone is taken to scramble home, and I'm anticipating odds of around seven to one each way. And um, I'm sure there'll be three places, of course, but I'm sure there'll be some firms offering four. So Rathbone is my second choice for you uh, for Saturday. Let's hope he runs really well. And uh, that's to go along with my selection of Mutter Saarbeck in the lock-in stakes at Newbury a few minutes earlier. Let's hope these run as well as the horses did for us last Saturday. Check out Out in Front with the Patreon link just below this screen. And I'll be back same time next week. Best of luck this weekend. Bye-bye.